There's a huge reason newbies fail. You have some awesome dreams and you've been working really hard, but are you actually gonna make those dreams come true? Are you actually making good progress or are you failing? Several years ago, I was invited by a family friend to an amazing business opportunity. He took me to lunch and told me how this opportunity had completely changed his life financially and how he wished that he could have gotten started younger at my age. He then invited me to attend a company meeting with him, which sounded really cool to a broke kid looking to earn some extra money to help pay for college. Well, the dude giving that presentation totally convinced me that I should join their financial services company. But before I get into how this was one of the worst and best decisions of my life, I wanna share with you a framework for succeeding. The steps that every successful software engineer, entrepreneur, or whatever other type of accomplished person takes to succeed. First, think and grow rich is a great concept and it's an easy way to sell books, but no person just sitting on their sofa all day thinking about becoming rich all day is ever going to truly become rich or successful by doing that. You have to spend time learning the skills needed to become successful. If you want to be a successful programmer, you're going to need to learn the fundamentals of programming or it's just not gonna happen. At that financial services company, I spent a ton of time learning about mortgages, about debt solutions, how to read financial documents, and how to do financial math calculations. I even took a test and got a mortgage license. I thought I was totally ready for success, but I was so completely wrong. Even though I had taken the first step by learning and studying all of these topics, there were still several more steps needed for me to actually become successful. My first appointment with a potential client just totally sucked. I mean. I totally sucked. It was awful. And I felt like the biggest idiot in the world despite having studied and taken that test. The person asked a question and I just totally clammed up. Then another question and another question. All right, just give me an F and let me go home. Just kick me out of your home because I'm so freaking embarrassed and I can see on your face that you're just not impressed with me, but you're not gonna let me out of this easy. You're gonna just enjoy making this as hard on me as possible. The next several appointments weren't much better and I really, really wanted to quit, but I'd already just racked up a ton of credit card bills in order to pay for all of these courses and the tests that were going to start me off on my way to become a millionaire. The next step involves coming to the realization that it's a simple truth that real skills only come from actually doing something, from building something, by applying those things that you've learned. And on a positive note, at least I was in the building step, which was good because way too many people just stay stuck in the learning phase, just trying to learn everything before trying to actually implement what they're learning. I do totally believe that good preparation leads to good outcomes, but more often than not, people like to just stay stuck in that learning phase longer so that they can avoid having to actually do something hard with that knowledge. Let's jump back to that story. As awkward as those appointments were for me in the beginning, they were crucial for my development. I did end up having people escort me to the door. I did have people mock me. This taught me what products were easier to sell as well as which ones were going to be painful reminders of all of my weaknesses and mistakes. This left me with a couple choices. I could try taking one of the lazy routes. I could just focus on selling just the easy products or I could take the totally lazy route out and just shift all blame for my mistakes onto other people rather than owning my own mistakes. I mean, I saw lots of people doing that, blaming other people for a sell or a goal that went wrong, letting their ego just keep them from seeing their own mistakes. That's a total recipe for a boring life. You're gonna make mistakes and that's okay. Step three is just accepting that mistakes are normal and are part of the learning process, so be forgiving towards yourself. And after all, You've made it to step three, so you're doing a lot of good stuff. You're on the right path. Step four in this framework is one of the most critical steps. So I'm gonna jump forward in time a little, and at the end of this video, I will wrap up that financial services job story because things definitely took a turn for the worse, but I want to first inject a more recent story that drives home step four. You see, I've been a programmer for several years, but as a new programmer, I dealt with those same challenges of having to learn building and then making mistakes. For example, I'd be building a feature and then I'd be have this idea and I'd be like, wow, it'd be totally cool if this feature could also do whatever, fill in the blank. So I'd go ahead and I would add in that extra functionality to the features that I was working on. Anytime you have a thought that starts with, wouldn't it be cool if, seriously question the likelihood of it actually being used versus just wasting time on something that might be really cool, but that no one knows exists or that no one will end up using. Just write that down as an idea, but don't just jump on implementing it 
until that idea is actually needed. This is super important because cool ideas often distract from achieving our most important priorities. And I only learned this because I built a ton of cool extra functionality into features that nobody ended up using because in some cases, the use case never materialized. And in others, people just didn't know that that feature existed. In software development, this is called over-optimization. And it's a mistake that lots of programmers make at some point in their career. Some programmers aren't even aware that they are making this mistake because it's so easy to focus on cranking out code for that next feature that you just don't take time to reflect on what worked, what didn't work, and what you would do differently in the future. The same thing goes for other things in our life. Some cool project or business ideas could potentially lead to just something huge, but more often than not, they distract from our main goals. Step four is taking that time to actually reflect and trying to honestly identify the mistakes and figure out a better way to do things it's also the step that holds people back. Most people either stay stuck in the learning study step and never put anything into practice, or if they do start doing stuff, they are just too worried about looking good and intelligent that they don't do step four. They completely avoid thinking about their mistakes, so they never come up with a plan for how to avoid it in the future. This guarantees them a spot at the mediocrity table. To succeed in life, you need to get comfortable accepting your mistakes. Everyone sucks in the beginning. I sucked a ton as a new programmer, but as you follow these four steps, you start to suck less and less until one day, you actually are pretty good at something. Now back to the financial services job, it probably seemed like a respectable job since I had a mortgage license and had received a lot of financial services training. Would it change your perception if I told you that in those early recruiting meetings, the speaker talked about books like Think and Grow Rich, The Richest Man in Babylon, and other books on becoming millionaire? Or what if I told you that there was a downline and that you could also receive commissions from other folks that you convinced to join the company? Or that you had to pay hundreds of dollars to join the company in the name of being sort of your own business? I mean, if that isn't one of the most obvious red flags ever, you should never have to pay to get hired on at a company and to buy all their stuff. Or that people flexed expensive gold rings and huge bonuses for having more people in their downline a path to easy millions. An opportunity that they said was worth taking on lots of credit card debt if needed because it's going to be easy to pay back as soon as you're a millionaire. Oh, and don't forget to cast away any doubters out of your life because they're only going to hold you back. Sounds like the type of company that's bound to collapse. And it did. There was a significant delay in getting commission checks. And right as I was finally starting to get mine, the company filed for bankruptcy. I wonder why. I didn't receive everything that I was owed and I had a ton of credit card debt. But worse was the shame that I had encouraged customers to sign up for products and services that they just were not going to even receive because the company had gone bust. That was the worst feeling in the world. And I could have tried to ignore my mistake. I mean, after all, I had been pretty naive. I could have just blamed it on other people. Instead, I spent a lot of time really reflecting on that experience. And I came up with a plan to avoid those kinds of companies in the future. I learned to identify the red flags as a result. And now I have a mental bs meter that totally goes off whenever I see companies using certain shady patterns and tactics. And this has saved me from being involved with several other questionable companies, whether as an employee or as a customer. Oh, and that guy who brought me into this whole mess, well, he never made it to step four. He chose to rationalize off things. He refused to cut his losses and he bought into their promises that he was still going to get paid if he stuck around and continued to dump a lot more time and energy into selling these products. A year later, that dude approached me about another amazing opportunity that had completely changed his life forever. I felt really bad for him. He was stuck in this loop that would not end well. As a software engineer, identifying mistakes and learning from them has been more effective in my career development than any other skill or process. If you wanna be super successful, you need to study, build, make mistakes, and then reflect. This is a huge part of being successful, but it alone won't be enough. To achieve your goals, you can't just keep doing what most employees do. You should watch this video to avoid the same big mistake that I kept making for way too long. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Lates.